my little green beans. I got a tripod. I don't know how it works. Yay! Why did I get a tripod? I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, I just finished a delicious smoothie and my husband is making a cheeseburger. None of those things are medieval things, but I thought, why not, since, you know, we're in quarantine 2020, why not dive a little bit deeper into what medieval people ate and make some medieval people food? So, medieval people ate some things they ate were very similar to what we eat today, and some things were very different. Medieval Europeans did not have potatoes, they did not have tomatoes, they did not have coffee. It was a nightmare. We were all so grumpy all the time. But anyway, um, those things came later, after Columbus went and, you know, ruined the lives of a bunch of people, but brought back potatoes. It does not excuse his behavior. But he did bring back potatoes and tomatoes. Mm, no, he's still a turd. Anyway, um, so medieval people, medieval peasants in particular, ate something called pottage. Um, it's spelled P-O-T-T-A-G-E. So you could probably say potage or potage or like pootage but I think it's probably pottage because it's spelled like cottage, but with a P. So pottage is like a vegetable stew. You might be wondering, why aren't you eating like a medieval queen? Because you are a queen. And the answer is, well, duh. One, I already know I'm a queen. I don't need to eat like a medieval queen to tell me that. Two, more importantly, medieval kings and queens ate actually a lot of uh, meat and cheese and fat and I'm trying to minimize my grocery trips because we have immunocompromised and elderly people in our community and I want to make sure that I minimize my contact with other people as much as possible. So I'm looking at the things I've got which are largely root vegetables yay, and cans of green beans because Bjorn likes them because if Bjorn doesn't eat green beans He'll eat wood chips. Anyway, um, so I'm trying to not eat like medieval kings and queens. I'm trying more to eat like medieval peasants who actually ate mostly vegetarian. Most of their calories actually came from eating bread. Hey. And you know me, love my carbs. But I can't bake bread. Maybe I'll learn. Anyway, I'm gonna make pottage today out of the root vegetables that I have on hand and whatever else I can find. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, we're gonna go through it and as I go through it, I'll tell you more about medieval people's lives, their pets, uh, more about what they ate, cause I love me some food, what they wore, their day-to-day -day lives and what they all did during the Black Death. Cause why not? Cause giant world ending plagues. <laughs> so join me in this fabulous food adventure children and you can try to make some for yourself. As always, ask a guardian or a parent or somebody if you can cook. I actually have a gas stove, so I'm gonna be using that because, and that's actually kind of authentic because you know, fires and stuff. But if you really wanna be super authentic, put one in a fireplace or build a tiny fireplace in your backyard and then build an enclosure and let it get really, 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 really smoky and then cook in that. It's very safe. It's totally safe. Your parents will be fine with it. Michael, will you eat some of my pottage? Probably not. He's no fun. Quarantine sucks. <laughs> I'm really starting to regret my choices because Michael also made tater tots. And I really want them.
we're definitely gonna put carrots in. One, because I love carrots. And two, because carrots existed in the Middle Ages. Woo! Um, they actually looked pretty much the same as contemporary carrots. They also had chickpeas, so I'm gonna say they probably also had hummus. They did not. They did not. You know what? I don't need your sash. I don't need it. Eating like a person in the Middle Ages is not going well. I have stolen two tater tots. Don't tell Michael. You might be thinking, oh, but pears, pears are an Asian fruit. Ha ha, no. Medieval Europeans ate pears because of the Romans who were familiar with tree grafting. And so they brought pears to Europe. But Pager probably didn't eat them. Oop. Oop. Dearest students, I have a confession to make. I cheated. I used a sweet potato. I used a sweet potato because I thought I had parsnips. I really thought I had parsnips. But the parsnips are gone. Look at the internet. Did you take the parsnips? Guilty. The face of a guilty dog. Bjorn is helping. Can I have my foot back? No? Okay, cool. Ordinarily, we would have used a stew pot, but, uh, or a cauldron of some kind, but I've got carrots, parsnip, it's sweet potato, onion, and garlic, because those things were all used in the Middle Ages, except for the sweet potato, but pretend it's parsnip. We're pretending. It's quarantine, people. Come on. So, for the most part, this is medieval, except for the sweet potatoes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> wow, it was amazing how fast I got over that. Anyway, for the most part, this is going to be a pretty medieval, a common medieval stew. Um, and I've eaten like a medieval person all day and I hated it, but mostly just because Michael had tater tots and I really <laughs> like tater tots. So what are you going to do? But, um, medieval people had to eat, medieval peasants actually had to eat kind of a lot because they actually would work in the fields and burn up to 4,000 calories a day, like on average. This is my research. I could be completely wrong. I could be totally inaccurate, but what are you gonna do? Um, so what I used at first, they burned, sorry, they burned 4,000 calories a day and they had to make up those calories with, no, with very little meat and very little cheese, but they did have spices. So they did actually season their food. Um, they didn't have the rich array of spices that uh, the Middle East had for the most part. However, they were familiar with a lot of those spices. The medieval world was actually a lot more interconnected than we think it was, chickadees. So yeah, they had access to, and they could grow, bay leaves, sage, thyme, rosemary, and they had access to salt, which was a big deal. Europeans loved salt and pepper. Medieval Europeans loved salt and pepper, like we love salt and pepper today. In fact, salt, as you might remember, is one of the reasons that medieval African kings, medieval African kingdoms, like the kingdom of Mr. Mansa Musa, um, got, they got so, so, so wealthy because they controlled such a big portion of the salt trade. So, uh, a big component of this stew that makes it like really different from things I've eaten in the past is rolled oats. And I am entirely certain that every single medieval peasant did that when they brought out their rolled oats. They were like, hey, it's time for rolled oats. <laughs> and they just did a little dance because um, they, that's, that's normal. It's a normal thing to do.
But yeah, I'm gonna put rolled oats in soup. What? I thought you went in oatmeal. No, I go in everything. Everything. Everything! We're gonna have Thai food. Shut up! I'm sorry, we're gonna fight. I am now adding cabbage and mushrooms. No, no, no. But I, I could, no, no, no. It's tough out here, kids. Well, usually the mushrooms would be foraged from the surrounding areas. Oh, my hat fell off. Mushrooms would be foraged from the surrounding area. I foraged them from the grocery store a while ago. Uh, cabbage usually wasn't the red cabbage that you see. It was like that green kind of less colorful and exciting cabbage, but what you gonna do? We make do with what we have, kinder beans. Um, yeah, I'm gonna slice it a mushroom. I have a slice of cabbage and then I put it in the stew and I simmer it for a little while and then I add some vegetable broth. Usually they would add, they would either have vegetable stock that they would bake using water and scraps of vegetables or um, a, a meat stock using the bones of animals they had prepared and cooked earlier. I don't have those things unless I were to kill my dog. <laughs> I would never do that. <laughs> He's not very annoying. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna to continue to make this stew. I'm gonna try something called talk and chop, which is where I chop stuff while talking. <laughs> this is going to go badly. <laughs> I'm in danger. Anyway, uh, medieval people actually rarely kept pets. Uh, threatening to kill my dog made me think like, man, I wonder how many medieval people got really annoyed at their pets and looked it up. Medieval people actually really didn't have a lot of pets. Um, in fact, the writings that exist mostly about medieval pets are people complaining that people shouldn't have pets at all because they're totally frivolous and they're expensive and they're annoying and they eat your shoes and they wake you up at odd hours. We're struggling here. Anyway, uh, there was actually uh, a letter to a bunch of medieval nuns from the bishop, I think, um, a medieval directive for them to stop adopting so many frickin' pets and saying they could only keep like one cat because they were, it was getting out of hand. Mostly medieval dogs and cats, though kept as pets, were often used more for uh, working. And generally peasants didn't really keep pets. They would keep farm animals uh, if they if they could afford it, they they would keep farm animals and sometimes have used dogs for hunting, things like that. But they didn't really have the like companion pets we have today. So no cool bearded dragon lizards, no cool like I don't know what's a pet I want. No hamsters. I feel kind of bad for them. Hamsters are cute. Ugh. I almost chopped my finger off. <laughs> Whoa, I've got like a five head. Anyway, I've got these mushrooms all sliced. Bjorn the parsnip thief is at my feet, ready for me to drop a mushroom. Boom! Oh man, crap. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> darn it. Oh, oh man. I'm just over here just plopping mushrooms down left and right. But anyway, I've got the cabbage in, I've got the mushrooms in. I am going to simmer this for a little bit, then I will add broth and I will let that simmer for a really long time and finish it off with my frenemy rolled oats. <laughs> How are you liking that mushroom, Bjorn? He's gonna puke that up. All right, um, <laughs> I am going to be adding thyme, rosemary, uh, a bay leaf, and some salt and pepper because those were all commonly used spices found in medieval Europe. Yay! While this stew simmers before I 
put in uh, the oats. I will take this time to look some stuff up about medieval clothes. And we will talk about it. <laughs> oh boy. So this is a bay leaf. It's dried. When you put it in any super stew, it really brings flavor out and it's really, it's just, it's delicious. But uh -uh, it's kind of gross if you eat it. So make sure you take it out before you serve the stew. And I'm gonna be putting in rosemary and this is what dried rosemary looks like. They're little like sticks. They grow really easy in this area. So fun project for you to do while you're stuck at home quarantining. Try to grow some rosemary, man. It grows like anywhere. I think. I'm actually a really bad gardener, so please don't take that as like good advice. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be adding sage and thyme, but those don't have as distinct a look when they're dried. But I did wanna show you what, they, what those two things look like. So if you have them around your house, you can throw them in there too. We can all like, eat like medieval peasants together. And then we can tell it like this all day. And tell about all our workers out in the fields. Growing barley and rye. So, um, the food that they ate, that medieval peasants ate, was totally different from the food that the medieval kings ate. And you can see that in the very few drawings that there are. Hans Bruegel did some, uh, but there are very few drawings of medieval peasants. But when they, are, when they are present in drawings, as you've seen students, they are emaciated and pretty miserable looking. Um, however, oh man, you need to stir. Whoa. Anyway, um, Medieval kings and queens, as I've already discussed, ate lots of game, ate cheese, ate fruit from around the world. Um, but one thing that they didn't actually eat was oranges. I thought they ate oranges and I was about to eat an orange today and I looked it up. They only ate bitter oranges. The sweet oranges we eat today didn't happen. Squash also, nope. That happened after Columbus. Again, turd a real turd, but squash happened after Columbus, so did corn. So we've got tomatoes, potatoes, squash, corn, all of those things are off the menu, should you choose to eat like a medieval peasant for the day. <sighs> Carrots are really good though. I mean, eh? While the stew simmers, let's talk fashion. Um, so much like today, Medieval nobles and kings and queens wore things that changed from decade to decade. Their fashions were changeable, their styles were changeable, and they were very concerned with showing that off. Uh, however, the peasants, I am learning in my research, thank you Thoughtco and Medievalist.net. Um, in my research, I'm finding the vast majority of peasants wore a tunic. Men wore it, women wore it, children wore it. The only thing that really varied was the length. Um, the tunic, and it's the same piece of clothing that their Roman ancestors had worn in medieval Europe. It's derived from a Roman word, tuniqua. Tuniqua, tunica, I don't know but it's derived from a Roman word. They wore the same fashion that they'd been wearing for generations. A tunic is basically a long piece of wool, flooped over your head, hole cut out for the head, cinched at the waist, maybe sewn on the sides, maybe just like long armhole kind of sewn on the sides. But if you're a woman, you generally wore your tunic a little bit longer to your mid calf, and then there would be a slit up the side so that you could engage in the dynamic movement of I don't know, chasing down children? I have no clue, but I do know they did that. Wool is very scratchy, so if you have a wool sweater, just wear that all week, and you'll be a medieval peasant in no time. And don't bathe, because I don't have to see you in class, so <laughs> I don't care. Do it. I'm gonna get a lot of angry parent emails. Anyway, um, much like women's clothing today, there were no pockets. 
but the tunic was very useful. Um, they would wear kind of a legging thing underneath them. And the tunic was pretty useful because it was such, such loose fabric that you could just sort of tuck it up and make it into a little pouch. You could tuck it into the belt that people wore around their waists and make it into a little pouch and use it for gathering stuff. So usually the most common color for the tunic was blue because um, there were a lot of different shades of blue, but they used blue dye made from wogue. In fact, before medieval times, uh, a group of warriors called the Picts were known to dye their faces with blue woad, which is, I think, super boss, and I kind of want to do it. <sighs> Maybe. We'll think about it. But um, anyway, um, yeah, the woad plant grew everywhere, so it made the easiest dye, so everything was blue. But I'm looking right now at my notes, and I'm seeing there were other colors, yellow, green, and a light shade of red or orange. But those were all made from really inexpensive dyes, so the, the color is pretty light. Um, the rich reds and stuff that you see in medieval paintings are always on the very large, very statuesque nobles of the time. Yeah, the tunic get you some today it's the drip the middle ages drip am i using that word right i'm too old for slang anyway i'm gonna get back to stew as you can certainly hear my stew is still simmering but i couldn't wait it's got like 10 more minutes on it but i just couldn't wait i added the rolled oats do, 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 do. and a can of green beans because they had those, but they didn't have them canned. But whatever, again, quarantines. Um, I found my mom. It's so good. Holy moly. Holy moly. Holy sweet moly mackerel chickens. Medieval peasants secretly eating incredibly well. It's delicious, y'all. I'll publish a recipe in the uh, details of this and link you to some places where I got my research on all the random stuff I've been talking about. Um, this is a German rye bread that they would often eat. Medieval peasants ate a lot of rye bread to make up for, you know, the calories they expended during the day. And I'm expending like so many calories panicking about the quarantine, so. Y'all, this is so good. This is legit so good. I am so pleased with myself. I am the world's greatest medieval peasant that there ever was. Come at me, serfs. Yay! I made medieval food and it's so good. Oh my goodness, y'all really gotta try it. I'm not even kidding. I'm not like saying this for clickbaity reasons or anything. Like this is, it's fantastic. Man, wish I could share it with you, but I can't cause you're not here. And it's lame. I miss you guys a lot. Uh, I hope you're being good to each other. I hope you are maintaining social distance. Now, I know that after a week of quarantine, maintaining social distance sounds like, I don't even know. God, to me, it's pretty awful. I'm really lonely. <laughs> I'm super bored. Um, even when I'm working, I'm like, I'm so bored, no one to uh, play with. But um, yeah. You guys might be struggling, and I'm really sorry if you are. Uh, feel free to reach out to me via email. I'll try to get in touch. Uh, check out some of the other activities that I posted that you can do. Um, most of them, pretty much all of them, involve just random stuff that you have around your house. Uh, yeah. I'm going to post a read aloud from a medieval Japanese novel. You can listen to that if you would like and think about the similarities and differences between the Heian Kyo court and middle school society today. <laughs> it's a lot of mean girls, a lot of judgment. I actually think we've come a long way, so props to us. 
Um, I hope that you are well. I hope you are being well. I hope being good and doing well and doing kind things for other people. See if there's a way that you can um, volunteer to support uh, your elderly neighbors. See if there's a way you can cook for or donate food to uh, food banks or hospitals. A lot of food banks are accepting donations via Amazon, so you don't even need to go anywhere. Um, and a lot of hospitals, you can gather together or see what's happening already in your community to fund meals for some of our doctors and nurses and janitorial staff who are working overtime to keep us all safe. Yay! I hope you try this. I'm serious. It's super, it's a heck of good. Like, it's super delish. Um, give it a try. Make sure your dog doesn't eat parsnips. <laughs> Miss Weed doesn't know anything, but she's the best cook of all time. Come at me, Gordon Ramsay. Don't, don't, don't.